All right, guys, welcome back. Good morning. We are in Matthew 20. I titled this one, uh, Ministry Done the Right Way. And the verses that rose up for me were 24 through 28. And I love it in my Bible, and maybe most Bibles, but when Jesus is talking, it's in red. So he talks a lot in Matthew, and, and it's awesome to hear his word. So 24 through 28 says, when the 10 heard about this, they were indigent with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles, Lord, is over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to come become great among you must be servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Whew. Many of you that have heard me talk about the, the difference in life of being served and, and then serving is, it's one of the most powerful things I think I've ever, the transformation that I went through. That's, that's definitely one of the most powerful things I've ever been uh, part of. So uh, again, ministry done the right way. Uh, Matthew 20, my reveal. I love this quote. I love this quote. Real ministry is done for the benefit of those ministered to. Real ministry is done for the benefit of those ministered to. Not for the benefit of the minister. Uh, Scott says all the time, this ministry is not Scott's. It is his. It cannot be about man. Like Jesus, he does not come to be served, but comes to serve. Jesus did not come to get our service. He came to give you his services. Not that you might first do him honor, but that he might show you mercy. The death of Jesus, the giving of his life, purchased freedom for all of us. Whew, man, it's so powerful. And when you serve versus being served, it's, it's next level. Next level of, uh, <clears throat> of obedience uh, to, to not only take it in, but, but to give it, to give it back out. Very powerful. My implementation, in my life, right up to my last breath, I can never stop thanking Jesus for dying for my sins, the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. My prayer, <clears throat> Jesus, as you died on the cross for our sins, may I thank you all my days I have here on earth that one day I can thank you in person for your sacrifice. What's the first thing? I think the first thing that I am going to be confronted with in heaven is hopefully I'm going to be able to shake Jesus's hand and say, thank you. Thank you for the life that you've given all of us, not just me, but everybody had the same opportunity. Uh, I get my hair on my arms and the back of my neck is standing straight up, just thinking about that conversation that could possibly happen in my mind. I'm, I'm already reaching my hand out to thank, to thank him for all that he's done uh, in my life. I'm going to read this for you in my Bible. I think this is pretty, pretty awesome, but uh, it says, forgiving is love's revolution against love's unfairness. When we forgive, we ignore the normal laws that strap us to the natural law of getting even. And by the alchemy of love, we release ourselves from our own painful past. We fly over our dues paying morality in order to create a new future out of the past unfairness. We free ourselves from the wrong that is locked into our private histories. We unshackle our spirits from malice. And maybe if we're lucky, we also restore a relationship that would otherwise be lost forever. I think that's what it, what it turns to be a servant's heart is these are the things that, that um, once the, the, it's the script is flipped and you're done being served and you're ready to serve, these are the things that are very easy to let go of. So, all right, guys, love y'all, and uh, I'll see you in the morning with chapter 21.